Hello there, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today, I want to talk about the neuroscience of gratitude and optimism. Now, this is being filmed at the end of 2020, and a lot of people are going, Bill, you know, you positive guys are always just trying to put a big smile on your face and make everything good, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's neuroscience between both gratitude and optimism that can help us deal with the present and create the future we want. So gratitude. Now, of course, again, end of 2020, are there things to be sad about? Absolutely. And sadness isn't like some sort of failure to cope, you know. Things happen in our life and there's a loss of a, of a close person or a, a job or, or a business or whatever. Hey, you know, sadness is not a, it's not a failure to cope. It's something that we actually want to be proud of because we don't want to be going, I don't care, move on, right? You know, sadness is understandable. The challenge is when sadness kind of transforms into worry, depression, anxiety, and a negative view of the future. Because what that does is it actually traps us in a very specific part of the brain. For those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know I talk about three parts of the brain, brainstem, neocortex, middle brain, limbic system. So I call the brainstem, the lower brain, the limbic system, middle brain, and the neocortex, the, the top, or what I call the top of the mind. That's where the life from the top of the mind philosophy comes from. So we got this lower part of the brain that basically is a fight or flight part when it needs to be. And when it's not, it's just kind of regulating uh, things that we don't have to think about, breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, et cetera. Upper 80% of the brain, what I call the top of the mind, this is where we have uh, purposeful choices, where we make purposeful choices, where we decide who we are and how we are and how we want to deal with life. Middle brain is interesting. The limbic system is the scanner, processor, router part of the brain. Its mission on the planet is to keep us alive as a species, and so it has a tendency to pay more attention to, attention to negative input than it does positive, because it might contain a threat. It's not very smart. It's working with old software, so unfortunately it has a tendency to interpret almost anything negative as dangerous and throws us into the part of the brain that's designed to deal with danger. This is where we trigger adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, and get into that fight or flight mode. And hey, anytime we need to react without thinking, in a physically dangerous situation to be safe, this lower brain is the perfect part of the brain to go to. What I have found, however, is that we are constantly being thrown into this lower brain in situations where we're not in immediate physical danger and we certainly don't want to have to just react without thinking. We want to bring our best thinking, our best awareness, our purposefulness to how we are creating our present and our future. Gratitude will help us do that. Gratitude triggers this upper 80% of the brain. It triggers serotonin, endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, the things that actually allow us to feel good and to think about things in a way that is more purposeful. And so if you're looking at, all right, I'm dealing with 2020, going into 2021, or whatever situations we're dealing with, could be almost anything. How do we want to be? And will gratitude serve us? So what are we grateful for? You know, I am certainly grateful for my wife, Georgia, the relationship we have. We've kind of been together now since March in this house, pretty much. And it's just wonderful to be able to be with someone that you just love being with. I'm grateful to my two kids, Christopher and Nicholas, the relationships they have, the friendships they have, the lives they're creating. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to go around the world and teach my life from the top of the mind philosophy. Since uh, this last year, I've been able to do 166 plus uh, presentations to people around the world, and many of those are virtual, and I wouldn't have been able to do that many had not I been able to do this from this particular studio. I'm also looking to the future in a way that I think allows us to be optimistic. There's a gentleman by the name of uh, Martin Seligman. He wrote a book called Learned Optimism. And in this book, he talks about the difference between what he calls Pollyanna optimism and realistic optimism. So optimism isn't just thinking, yeah, everything's going to be great and I'm going to find Mr. and Mrs. Right and it's all going to be good. And I just have to hold positive thoughts and put a gold smile on my That's Pollyanna optimism. Realistic optimism is looking at the world realistically and optimistically. 
that actually triggers the optimistic, forward-thinking, positive part of the brain. And it begins to allow us to access the skills and abilities and, 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 and future visions that we can begin to make happen. There's a great quote from the linguist, uh, cognitive science philosopher, Noam Chomsky. He says, optimism is actually a strategy for making a better future. Because unless you believe that the future can be better, you are unlikely to step up and take responsibility for making it so. See, unless we believe that the future can be better, then we just go, well, there's nothing in reason I can do it. I guess I'll just sit back and, you know, whatever. But if we believe the future can be better, then we are more likely to step up and take responsibility for making it so. That all comes from the upper 80% of the brain, this belief that we can create our life in a way that we would recommend to someone we love. This belief that our life can begin to be better because of the steps we take and our willingness to take 100% responsibility for making that happen so we don't need something or someone out there to change in order to make that happen. Easier said than done, absolutely. But can you see how that's probably something you would recommend to someone you love, something that probably you would like in your life? If you would like my help in that, this is what I get to do. I get to go around the world when it's time to travel, virtually when it's not, teach people how to access this clear, confident, creative, compassionate part of who we are, how to rewire the brain so we actually start living in this part of the brain. It becomes our default position and actually how to engage others in a way where they shift from what I call the resistant brain to the receptive brain, so we can create true uh, solution-focused conversations with these folks. This is something you believe would be valuable for your organization, your family, you. All you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in. Love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, thanks for being a part of my life in this particular time, in the future, in the past. This has been a real special experience for me to be able to do these on a weekly basis. I plan to continue posting one of these videos each week. If you like them, hit the like button, share them with your friends if you find them valuable. You can follow me like on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or iTunes or uh, LinkedIn, all of the social media. I try to post one each week. So until we meet again or until we have an opportunity to connect again, here's to you. Bring in more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the future.